Bad Rocks and Blast Beats for another week, the nerdiest uh, <laughs> podcast, the coolest uncool podcast, the Transformers sweating podcast. Um, just a, an excuse for three nerds to get together every to week talk about and Transformers. to talk about Transformers. Transformers. I may I may break out into song at some point in time because the theme song is stuck in my head. I am one of your nerds, Joshua Redbeard. I am another one of your nerds. I'm Margie. Ah, uh, nerds. I'm Grant. Um, uh, <laughs> shit, I'm also, a nerd. I'm also a nerd, aren't I? Oh. Uh, wedgies all round. Wedgies all round. Uh, <laughs> My butt crack. Al- yeah, as always, I'm going to take us into the nerdiest thing that we've done this week. And for myself... It's the spooky season, so I've been watching a lot of one of my favorite YouTubers named Mr. Bolin. So he does, it's like B-A-L-L-E-N, not like balling. But um, so what he, he does like true crime shorts or he would do like uh, cryptids. He would talk about like just creepy experiences mm. people have had. Or he also does this series that's um three places where people shouldn't have gone it's just all these things about like people have died doing dumb shit like cave <laughs> oh. diving oh or cave like, diving is the dumbest absolutely like, not yeah people swimming in dams and then all of a sudden like they get sucked down like the overflow tube in the middle of the dam where you're not supposed to be swimming and it's just like harrowing stuff like that or there was there's one recently where these these this group of teenagers they all come to this swimming spot that's like off this track and the siren goes off, like this loud siren in the middle of the forest. Like, oh, they stop. They listen to the siren. Like, oh, that's weird. Keep walking towards the river. The siren goes off again five minutes later. Like, oh, that's really weird. But nothing happened after the first time. So they keep walking towards the river. You know, they're all hanging out in the river. The siren goes off a third time. And they're like, nothing's happened before. This is all right. And then after they're all in the water for like two minutes later, after that third siren, a big wall of water comes through. It turns out the river they're in is a runoff from a dam. <laughs> so they they all they pretty much all got swept away with the water. Only one of them died, and the only one that died was the person that actually had like safe footing when the water came through. But they jumped in to try to help someone else. Everyone else survived except for that person. Oh, that's yeah. Don't so the, person, moral to it's the all that kind of stuff. Um, so <laughs> like, do, do you guys do you guys believe in like ghosts? Do you like ghost stories and stuff? I like I like ghost stories. I wouldn't say like I've never had any paranormal experiences. Like I wouldn't say I don't believe in it, but I yeah, I have not experienced it personally. Mm. So I don't have yeah. I don't have a frame of reference to say to someone that I don't believe it. But there's obviously there's so much fake stuff out there that's obviously fake that I'm like you're not really Slender doing Man any is help real. Either. Yeah, so same as Grant. I've never had an experience, but people that I, I have friends that I know are quite oh, hysterical is a rude word for it, but like people who will believe stuff like that, and people who are quite like logical and calculated. And some logical and calculated friends have had some pretty intense experiences that I mm-hmm. like that I know they wouldn't just like immediately jump to ghosts. And so that makes me think maybe like experiences are possible. But yeah, again, I haven't had one myself. Mm. Well, this guy sounds spooky. I want to hear more about cryptids. I love cryptid stories. Yeah, so he does like he does like a lot of like people like send in like their personal things as well. Like there was this really cool story that I was listening to where this guy's family had sold their cabin that was in the woods. It was like built into like a rock face. Like it wasn't Why like Why would you deep... sell that? That sounds bore. Oh, I guess they they won't live in there anymore. He was only 17 years old. So he goes and he like stays at this cabin for a couple of days before it's gone. And after the, like, uh, his dog wanted to go outside to, like, go to the toilet or something. And he noticed there was a couple of footsteps around. But they kind of went to the woods. And he couldn't really, like, see anything because it was, like, quite dark out. Like, thick, thick, thick woods. And so his dog went to the toilet. And then he came back and it was really standoffish, staring out to the woods. So he went and got his torch. And in front of this cabin, there's this big tree that has, like, a, a branch about 20 meters up. Like or oh, twenty feet up, they'd say that's probably not so quite twenty scared. meters, and it's kind of like it like peers like directly into like the second story of this cabin, pretty much. And he's he gets his torch, he's aiming it all through the forest, and he can't find anything. 
And then he looks up there for a second and he sees like a creature like hanging over this branch that's 20 foot up in the air. And then he dropped his torch. He picks it back up. And he looks and it's gone. But he's nah. like, lives. he lives out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> yeah, right? Nah. So oh, even the fact that there was like footsteps around his house is like odd immediately. But he's like, well, maybe it's like one of the neighbors or someone's like just trekked through here. But like if anyone was coming that close to the house, you'd think if they needed help or something, they'd knock on the door. Hmm. But anyway, like, you know, he he goes inside, he, you know, plays video games or something until like one o'clock, closes all of his blinds, goes to bed. But once he gets into bed, he like, he makes sure he locks everything downstairs. And he starts to hear like these kinds of sounds and his dog the whole time is just staring down the staircase. Absolutely not. No. And no. then he starts to hear the sound of hooves on the roof of the house that he's in. Mountain goats. And that's like, there's no way, there's no way to get to the roof of where he is, let alone if it was a deer that fell on there, you'd hear a crash. It was just hooves he hears. And then it stops. And then he hears a tap on the door downstairs and him himself and the dog react to it. And then that stops. And then he's like, he hears the sound on the roof again. So he takes his torch and he opens the balcony door to look up. There's nothing there. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there. He closes the door, makes sure it's locked, gets back in his bed, right? And then from then on, the knocking starts again. And it happens first on the front door, then on all the windows, and then the second story windows and the walls, the windows in the bathroom, like, you know, those tiny small windows in the bathroom, like above like a shower or something on a second story, just like a place where you couldn't just tap. Like It's just tapping. It's just like tick, 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 tick on all these all these things i can hear my dog belting against the door while i'm telling this story um, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah, and he's knocking um <laughs> and then eventually gets to like knocking behind his bed knocking on the roof and then knocking on the balcony door like a meter away from where he's sleeping behind the blinds and he's just like no nah. and this it's like 1 a.m. at this point so he's got hours before the sun comes up and then he just stays there. The knocking eventually stops, but like carries on in different positions throughout the night. And when he goes out in the morning, he opens up and there's like footsteps on the balcony that aren't here. It's like pacing. There's footsteps all around the house because it's been snowing. Like someone's just been circling the house. It's just such a creepy story. Like could be a creepy passer, but it is the way that he tells the story is just does much better justice than I did. Oh my god! My so, abridged version, but crazy, yeah, crazy person, crazy person in the woods, crazy person in the woods, crazy well, person Margie, in the woods. <laughs> Margie's not sleeping tonight. I'm I not think sleeping. I, I think oh it god. would. Uh, the story would imply that it wasn't a person because there's no way onto the roof, and even if there's no one under the roof, there's no way for him to tap on the wall. You know, on a second story. Mm. Like there's like, cause the, the balcony is literally just like a, like a front of the space balcony where, like, where you walk Ooh. out, like a, like a kind of like a terrace balcony and the rest of the, is just like a wood cabin. Like okay, mountain yeah. goats then. Mountain yeah. goats are really good at climbing. And you said it was built into a rock face in the woods. Yeah. They but you climb those things. Exactly. But you'd also. You hear them bleating. You, you'd hear it hit the roof. He didn't hear it hit the roof. It's just the footsteps begun. All right, Margie doesn't do well with ghost stories. Yeah. Neither tried. I'm all right. <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 what I've been getting up in, up to in the spooky season. How about yourself, Margie? What's the nerdiest thing you've done? I've just got to let my dog in before it breaks the door down. <laughs> yeah, my cat kicked the door down earlier. She likes doing that. <laughs> um, I I have peaked. Oh, judging. Um, I have peaked in my nerdiness, and I now uh, have two computer monitors uh, that my laptop plugs Nerd! into through. A dock, that's the word. It's a USB-C dock. And I also got a standing desk, um, which is pretty sick. It's got like a hand crank so I can like crank it up and down. Um, yeah, I'm really poor now, but I can <laughs> like just in time for me to drop out of uni for the semester. <laughs> I got I got a really good setup, which is going to make studying a lot easier. And it also makes recording a lot easier. And it makes computering a lot easier yeah and then absolutely. i was like wait a minute i could plug my laptop into these and watch tv from bed and then i was like 
oh my god I don't need people anymore um <laughs> so it's it's exciting times for me like you know I have a desk that I can actually clamp my microphone onto now um which is huge because I used to have to clamp it onto a book <laughs> um I don't <laughs> I don't have like a the the pole that you put screens on um I know all the technical terms the yeah I've... yeah I don't have one of those so my computer are just sitting on books um one is the complete <laughs> book of australian birds the other one nice. is organic chemistry i feel like that sums <laughs> me up quite well textbooks yeah, it really make does. It really does. yeah they they said oh you're gonna have you know, you know useless you'll never use them again look holding up my computer <laughs> fucking there you go uh, uh so uh, the, the poles would be cheaper than the books i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> well, not now. They're not up-to-date textbooks. Oh, Jeez. Okay. <laughs> I tried to get my little sister, only seven years after I was at uni, one of my biology textbooks, like, you know, the first year of biology textbook. And she's like, uh, that's not the current edition. And I was like, yeah, but, you know, it's got most things in there. Like, I don't think they've rediscovered the cell. Uh, but she's like, <laughs> no, I'm just going to use the modern one. And she's like, it's on the library website anyway. I was like, you guys have ebooks for your textbooks now? Like, Oh. I went to uni. I did my undergrad so long ago that we didn't have like the textbooks as ebooks. You had to like get the physical copy at the library <laughs> and like do your questions from there. And how times have changed. Anyway, I'm a nerd now. I have a good nerdy setup, and I just need a super good computer, um, and then I can be a gamer. <laughs> well, it's oh, never sorry. been cheaper than now, so it's not a bad time mm. to get into it. Mm. Just what you want, me on your Twitch streams. We'll have to find something easy I can play. I told you, Commander Keen, that's all I'll do. That's it. No, um, we'll get you on the Power Wash simulator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, Josh, you uh, you pimping your nerd setup? What have you been doing? I, 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 Margie, you'll actually be really excited for my uh, nerdiest thing this week. This is this is right up your alley. It better and, not be uh, a ghost story. That's not up my alley. It's, it's, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's it's better than a ghost story. So I had this random, oh. like, just like somehow you just find these links. I think maybe it was suggested on Facebook or something like that. But I have been, uh, I, I've been learning. I've been educated, learning about a very important feature of medieval art and massive changes that happened through the Renaissance. Uh, this very important feature of medieval art, medieval art babies are ugly as fuck. Like really, yeah. really ugly. And I found an article as to seen explain- their horses? Yeah. But I, I found an article that explains exactly why medieval babies are ugly as fuck and what happened to change it. So if we go back to the Middle Ages, most uh like most art was commissioned by the ultra wealthy. It was commissioned by the church. Yeah. Um and so the church uh like basically made people do a whole lot of like baby Jesus. Now baby Jesus in the Middle Ages. I believe it's pronounced baby cheeses, but uh, baby cheeses. Yeah. Baby yeah. Jesus in the Middle Ages. They they had this real obsession with Jesus being closer to a homunculi, which literally translates to little man rather than a child. And so like Jesus is often presented as like a middle-aged divorcee baby with a receding hairline. Like he's he's really, really ugly. And because like because most artists were commissioned through the church, so most were doing babies. When they did another baby afterwards, they would just make the baby look ugly as fuck. Because, like, Could you please that... make my baby look like Jesus. Yeah, because that was <laughs> that the I style... can do, lady. <laughs> that was the style at the time. Like, for like up up to yeah, up to the Renaissance, up to the fourteen hundreds, like all babies just looked really ugly because yeah, because they were making them look more like like homunculi rather than actually <laughs> babies. But then the Renaissance happened and the middle class flourished. And so then everyday people could afford to commission artwork as well. And of course, like a mother doesn't want an ugly fucking like painting of their child. And so like mothers who are proud of their children were asking these artists, well, rather than doing ugly babies, can you do a really cute, <laughs> adorable baby? So, you know, they, you know, at the end of the day, the middle class did what, did what the middle class do best. They saved the day and they changed the entire history of babies in artwork by making them not ugly as fuck anymore. 
And, Do you want uh, to know some hilarious shinfo about the middle class? I would love to know that. The only reason why it exists is because so many people died during the plague that they inherited all their shit from all their <laughs> neighbors. And then they went from being the surf class, like the serfdom class, to being the middle class just because they'd inherited so much wealth and land from but they didn't everyone inherit else that titles, died. So they couldn't Amazing. be the upper class. Yeah, so they just got stuck being the middle class. Amazing. So, like, they, they had enough money where they didn't have to surf under, like, the royals. But at the same time, they didn't Surfing have royal USA. titles. Sorry. So then people, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. That's a weird owl cover that's yet to happen. So then they just had to start they had to start paying people to do things instead. Funny that. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Uh, but I, yeah, one of my, my favorite things about art, you know, me trying to teach myself art history because I'm studying art conservation and I was like, I should probably know about that is just to look at boobs and animals from art. Mm. Um, so <laughs> if anyone follows me on Instagram, you'll know that I do my my titty posting um, of titties. Um, so much titty posting. So much titty posting. Um, or arse, because the arse is the titties of the back. Um, or <laughs> hilarious animals from art, because like every time I go to an art gallery, I take pictures of all the animal faces, because, man, some people are like, yeah, I could draw a dog, and you're like, can you? Can you? Can you? And it's like flawless representation of something else and then there's just the dog like eyes pointing in wrong direction snout on its back and you're like oh yeah let's see you didn't think to do anything about that all right cool it's one like they're mountain dogs <laughs> one of their mountain folk dogs <laughs> and, anyway um but that is very cool about the babies that yeah they wanted yeah, jesus um, to be a homunculi I'm they wanted jesus to be a homunculi and yeah it was the middle class that saved the day but dear listeners every week i post links to all our nerdiest things in the show notes i'll post the link to this article because it's an interesting article to read there's yeah. even like there's like a slider that has like two versions of uh, like 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 the mother mary and jesus and it's like you slide it back and forth and it goes between like ugly jesus cute jesus ugly jesus cute jesus ugly jesus cute jesus it's very very funny why does that sound um, like a simpsons bit <laughs> <laughs> ugly bit. jesus cute Doesn't jesus bit. but yeah i'll i'll post the link to that because it is it is actually very very interesting so yeah so i'm becoming an art nerd this week and that's definitely my nerdiest thing <laughs> i'm about it I'm about I, it. I knew that you would be. I really, really did. But it is time to move in to the medium beat. The medium beat changes every week, depending on kind of what's going on. We have a we have a segment that we like to do called highly underrated. And I almost had one this week, but I realized it's not actually at all underrated. So instead it's just it's a it's a walk down memory lane. Cause it was it was something that I'd completely forgotten about. Cause I think like, you know, part of this consumeristic society that we we live in we have to consume and consume and consume and then we just forget really really good things and bands we fall in love with and especially like my job like i will as... never forgive or forget there you go sorry there you yeah. go but yeah, so like, and my job, like as a radio host, like I have to listen to so many new bands every week. Like I'll fall in love with bands and then just forget about them like six I'm months so later. Cracking a cold one. Cracking um, a cold, cracking open a boy with the cold ones. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was at a, a, a rock and roll show the other night and like bands, you know, like they pick their playlists in between uh, the sets and whatnot. And so, it's so much uh, fun making the between set playlist. Oh yeah. Yeah, and you, you could tell that Make Them Suffer had had a lot of fun with this because there was like Rob Zombie and there was Power Man 5000. And then Linkin Park's Paper Cuts came on and Ooh. I realized I haven't listened to Hybrid Theory in... Pro like, it's it's 20 years old. I probably haven't listened to it in over 10 years at least. And I was like, I wonder if this still holds up or if it's just me holding on to nostalgia. And I'll still tell you, good. it's, it's still, good. still so it's still good. fucking good. It is um, such an incredible album. We we put on my band put on Hybrid Theory uh, whenever we drive anywhere in our drummer's car. R.I.P. Dan's car. Oh. Um, he got he got run into by someone, <laughs> but he only had like a CD player and he had like the limited selection and he had Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory in there and yeah and then it would just be my band singing along like smashing out Hybrid Theory songs. The album yeah. was so good that they removed the sound of the pick hitting the string. They edited it so hard. It's not even in there. If you listen to that album, meet like a hybrid theory and Meteora, there is the sound of the pick hitting the string is being edited out. It's just Amazing. cut that hard. 
amazing amazing oh, but yeah so God. i was like i was like all right is, is this still gonna hold up and yeah it really really does like if they released a hybrid hybrid theory today it probably wouldn't have as much impact but it would still be considered a very very like a high quality album with lots of fucking bangers the only weird part about it is like some of the like you know sampling djing like interludes and stuff like that were a little bit kind of like naff listening back like i remember them being a lot cooler than they were but you know like in you know 99 2000 like that was such a cool thing to have like a sampling yeah. dj turntablist in your fucking album uh but yeah though like honestly that's probably the only part that didn't really hold up as well as i remember or as well as i hoped can't uh, compete with the humble macbook now it can't it it, it really <laughs> really can't um <laughs> But yeah, so it, it, it was really, really nice. And it kind of made me want to like go back and listen to some other albums from that time. Like there is still stuff that I do. I still listen to significant other more than I listen to most albums today. But I, I'd completely forgotten about Linkin Park, to be honest. I haven't thought about them in ages, obviously, apart from unfortunately Chester's passing away a couple of years back. Um, yeah, you're living I, your I, life wrong if you're not thinking about Linkin Park. Apparently, day. apparently. But yeah, it's... it. I, I love nostalgia for fucking so many reasons and the, yeah, like attaching to my youth. But yeah, I think the, the thing I always worry about with nostalgia is, is it good or is it just that I remember it being good and uh, can confirm Linkin Park still hybrid good. theory. <laughs> still good. Still Limp very, very still good. good. Limp Bizkit still very, very good. Uh, Static I've X been trying and to, I've Power Man 5000, my... not not at no, all. No. Good. Static um, X. I've been word. trying to persuade my band to do a Limp Biscuit cover for so long or a yes. Lincoln Park cover. Just like, don't I reckon, do Blake stuff. I reckon yeah, a Lincoln Park cover would pop off. 100%. Like, 100%. absolutely. 100%. Yeah. What song, what song would you do though, Marky? That's the question. Oh. Something I've become. Good song. Good choice. I'd go Maybe. one step closer. Yeah, oh, one like... step one step closer would be good. Oh. One step closer is Grant. That's as old as you, isn't it? It came out the same time. No, you were I, 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 funnily enough, like for <laughs> I, I remember when Hybrid Theory came out, but that's weird because I actually would have been. <laughs> it's young. The, it's, no, it's in two thousand. You couldn't have been more than like a year. Yeah, old. I was four. I remember when Hybrid Theory came out. <laughs> that's your earliest <laughs> memory. Yeah, <laughs> that's how fucking cool you are. My earliest memory is uh, Lincoln Park's uh, Meteora being released or Hybrid Theory being released. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, look like looking at the playlist now, Margie, I think a punk rock version of Runaway would actually go really, really well. Because you'd oh. have that real like sing you'd have that sing along yeah. chorus. Like mm. you'd kind of like like double time it kind of thing. And I think you could have a really fun, like melodic punk sing along chorus to Because you could to add something to it because it's not a fast song. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But then you could also be like crawling in my skin. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> So oh something to keep in mind, something to keep in mind, but, uh, yeah. So that's been my walk down memory lane for this week has been a reliving part of my childhood and being thankful that it was just as good as I remember. Oh, what if you did hit the floor? That's a oh. sick song. Hey, I know it's not, I know it's Meteora. It's not, it's not hybrid theory, but yeah, that's a sick song. Fair. M my Fair. cat doesn't like my standing desk because she can't <laughs> stand on me and bite me. Um. <laughs> actually going back to like our house music we used to in Z like we used to actually get the house guy or whatever sound guy we had always making sure he was playing spice girls in between sets fuck yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and, and you just like hear people be like oh upset it's like oh why well, they played this shit the music blah 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 it's like well, like you already listened to a bunch of death metal. You don't need to listen to death metal in between your death metal. Yeah, you don't need to hear how shit we compare to recorded death metal, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is this is going to make me sound a lot younger than I am. Grant, that point, though, reminds me of a TikTok that is going around at the moment of like, <laughs> yeah, right? I know. How impressive am I? I'm, I'm relevant. I'm with the kids. Um, but I know there's a, there's a, like a, you know, they have like different like themes and stuff they're doing TikTok. And one's like people at a party and like a song comes on and they pretend to like hate it. And they're like, oh, this song sucks so much excuse me and they like go into the bathroom and just start singing along to it i reckon those same nerds are just like oh this fucking spice girls song sucks but in their head they're all like if you want to be my lover yeah is that well, here spice girls and not sing along to it like me like me and one of my best mates like we absolutely unironically just love the backstreet boys yeah. it's been like backstreet, a, it's been a, backstreet's it's, back is a bop back, yeah, an actual it's bop. back. all right even the back catalog we listen to the back catalog like yeah. <laughs> 
No, even Backstreet fans, they don't listen to the back catalogue. <laughs> isn't that isn't that the back catalogue? Backstreet's back was fucking when I was like five years old. Yeah, That's no, absolutely yeah. older than you are. Yeah, um, no, it's not. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to look this up now. Backstreet's back, because I swear that's older than you are. When did that song come out? Came out in 97. All right, you were one. I was one. But also, <laughs> like, I, well, I was babysitting the other the other week. Uh, well, it was actually probably about a month ago now. And, um, like, these these kids are, like, doing all these Fortnite dances and shit. Like, I don't get this. Like, oh, have you heard this song? I'm like, no, I've never heard this song. Have you heard this song? No, I've never heard this song. And then they put on Backstreet's Back. Like, oh, have you heard this song? I'm like, how have you heard this song? <laughs> <laughs> They've heard it through the TikToks. <laughs> yeah. And then they start doing all these memes. They're like, oh, man, I feel so old. And then, like, one of the kids just goes, D's nuts. I'm like, fuck, that's an, even an old meme for me. Like, to me, like, they, that's an old know, meme. How do they know D's nuts? My yeah, that's, that's, like, that's, that's like 2015. That's old to me. I'm about to turn around to this kid and be like, what's 9 plus 10? 21? No, it ain't. <laughs> start throwing out <laughs> ancient memes at <laughs> these kids. I found I found the best. It was a I think it was a TikTok. I don't know. It was on the Instagram Reels one of them of like archaeologists in the year three thousand and them finding like a USB and they're like we found it and then it shows like the British Museum presenting and they're like this is the most exciting acquisition that the British Museum has ever acquired. Maybe the most important bit of culture of all time and it's like best of vines compilation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that, that, that was an entertaining three minutes when Vine was around. Yeah, Vine, oh, Vine I, walked so TikTok could run. Nah, Vine's still better. Vine's are so much better. Vine's are 100% better. Yeah. But is, is that though, is that nostalgia though? Is it because Vine's were around when we were young? That's the question. Like, I think like you had to be funny in five seconds. You had a, you got like a whole minute on TikTok, don't you? True. Yeah. Yeah, TikTok. And, a half, and you, got, you can like edit the videos. He was better on TikTok. You don't see that. You don't see that on Vine's. You see ingenuity darkness. you see absolute darkness is what you see um <laughs> darkest depths of humanity yeah but though <laughs> it is it is time to though to move in uh to the main beat for this episode and this one we've entitled class warfare uh as we we're getting take, racist we are we are definitely getting racist we are, we are looking at the various races and classes throughout uh the fantasy set and we're going to argue over which one is the best and the worst and i, I feel like a point has to be made at the start of this is when we say races we are talking about species those in the fantasy realm those two words are interchangeable because there yeah. is the uh, there's there's an interesting article which, which i'll post in the show notes because it is it is an interesting read and makes some interesting points but it's like it's it says that there's a lot of racism but all of it seems to be based around the semantics of uh jrr tolkien calling the hobbits a race rather than a species and i'm like all right, well, that's just semantics at this stage. So making it clear, when we say... I mean, in Dungeons & Dragons, it is a race if you're choosing a species. So Can't they? They can mate with each other, though, can't they? Yeah, you can get half so orcs then they, and half orcs. Wouldn't they technically actually be the same species then? Because you can't... Like, I'm, not sure, I'm not a scientist, but I thought that was like a defining thing. Well, you no, can't you can, mate you with can a different mate, species. You can, mate, um, you can mate a horse and a donkey and have an ass. Yeah, I guess so. not, yeah, it's yeah. not reproductively <laughs> viable because of their chromosomes. Um, yeah, so, you yeah, you can you can yeah. breed different species together. That's how and, evolution and, works. Yeah, and that's why and we, we have use science, <laughs> <laughs> and we use the term the human race. Like the the Cambridge Dictionary defines the human race as a collection of all the people in the world, and so it's not wrong to say you know, the race of elves or orcs or whatever like that. So, yeah, so just just making that point clear is that we're using those terms interchangeably because it's, that seems to be such a contentious thing for debate, but it, it also just kind of seems like semantics. Is it? I, I've never seen that debate in my the, life. It, in this article, it is the big, big point. Man, nerds will thing. get angry about anything. I was going to say, is, is this just one <laughs> article on BuzzFeed that's just trying is to this, make something is a just, problem? This just, is this just someone's <laughs> comment on Reddit? Like. Yeah. No, no, it's it's the the website's the the it's www.publicmedievalist.com. Uh, and it, it goes for a breakdown. And like I said, it makes some interesting points about how we've kind of progressed over time and how like Wizards of the Coast have tried to change things through Dungeons and Dragons and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of it is based on the very semantic point of using the term race instead of species, which in every bit of fantasy is just interchangeable. Yeah, that's yeah. 
Um, well, obviously, yeah. the best race and class is what I play in D&D, which is a half-elf druid. So, <laughs> job done. True. I mean, can't Hella argue with that. charismatic. <laughs> Do they Very weak, though. What the other half is, though? Like, half-elf. Like, is it like half-elf? It's, half... it's, hum- it's human-elf, yeah. Oh, or is it like a half-elf, like, third quarter orc because like they're already half half orcs <laughs> like there's no you can't play a full orc in D. you have to be a half orc yeah that's because full orcs are evil but why are they evil oh all right so um <laughs> man, Segway. Like, okay so i think one of the things we got to talk about here is how mm. fantasy knocks out the same race tropes uh, over and over again like mm. it's got yeah okay so there's elves who are mythical and they have pointy ears and they're supernatural and they live forever and they're very enigmatic and then there's dwarves who like rocks and they like mining and then there's goblins or orcs or something that are evil and bad <laughs> and mean and then there's monsters like you know like it's the like a lot of the same um that you see well, I mean that's a, that's what I always found very very interesting is like I think mean, that's the difference between fantasy and sci-fi is like fantasy has these just accepted tropes that like fantasy universes will have at least one if not multiple of but we don't see that in sci-fi and I think that's like I disagree like, okay, I'll go like on. Okay, I'll Mobius watch. who des- who designed like the like say like the the futuristic the Mobius city. Strip? No, he. Oh, there's a different <laughs> Mobius. So Mobius is a French, a French artist, and he basically designed like the city skyline from Blade Runner. Mm. Oh, cool! And everything since then that didn't exist, like that visual of like the future, didn't exist before then, and now it's in everything. It's the same like dirty thing. So I guess realistically, like the sci-fi does steal tropes from other things as much. Maybe True. not in because they probably try to go more out there with the races. But mm. the setting, I would say, is far more. I feel like derivative. the races in sci-fi are a lot more, like modified, super modified human beings or mm. robot or cybernetics. You know, it's like androids, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Androids mm. and stuff. Like you see a lot. You know, like that. That's more the accepted tropes in yeah. sci-fi, and then an alien species mm. as well, and. Which are always humanoid. I'm sorry, but like, yeah. I know it's I know it's easy to put your actors into humanoid costumes, but like, I want more gelatinous, really gelatinous blobs. Gelatinous blobs. Yeah. What we about the different oozes. gravity on different planets? Like, they're from a really high gravity planet. So when you put them on a low gravity planet, they're just a blob. Like, <laughs> I want to see that. So, but like, I because I you like obviously you should play a lot more D and D than me, so I feel like you're a lot more schooled in kind of you know the the ins and outs of the of the the different classes and races and everything like that. So like I. I, I kind of wanted a deep dive about where these came from, like in like where, where these concepts came from in popular culture and where, where they kind of started from. It seems like most of them Fairy tales. come from, yeah, well, yeah, most of them come from like, yeah, Germanic Folk. and Norse mythology. Like there is, there is yeah. a lot that sort of lead back to that. Like, yeah, the, you know, elves started throughout like, you know, Norse and Germanic mythology is like magical, beautiful creatures who are sort of ambivalent towards others. Like they, they don't like, they're not malicious as such, but they also just don't, Really I'm better than you. Energy. They're ambivalent yeah. to the trials of a menial mortal being, you know. Honestly, in Lord of the Rings, they're still ambivalent. They True. suck. Yeah, they're just kind of like, eh, whatever. But like, yeah, they um, they were really, really popular throughout those sort of times. But then they, it fell out of favor throughout medieval times. As I think, like you know, Jesus came in and and took a whole bunch of just all the mythical creatures away. But it was actually apparently it was Shakespeare of all people who helped elves kind of come back and yeah, yeah Midsummer Night's like, Dream. Mid- yeah, in Midsummer Night's Dream. And then, and uh, yeah, and then he, <laughs> I, I think this is a, a wonderful oxymoron, but yeah, he inspired the uh, quote unquote German romantic writers to resurrect the term elf, which was sort of lost for a very long time. But the idea of a German romantic just seems like an oxymoron to me because it's terrifying. <laughs> More than... Speaking of racism. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, like, so the elves were like, you know, immortal, like supernatural beings. And it's like, mm. um, there, there are like a lot of fae stories as well from um, the UK, like Celtic and Welsh cultures and yeah, stuff. I've got stories they, about yeah. the fae and witches. My middle name is after a, um, a Celtic witch. 
So for all those filthy Anglo Saxons, <laughs> yeah. fuck it all up. <laughs> so <laughs> fucking dogs. Um, yeah. So like, you know, there's like a lot of like, and same with dwarves. They're also something that came about through um, mythology and folklore. Germanic. I think it was Germanic. Um, mm. is where dwarves came from of like a rock loving sort of people, like an earth loving sort of people and stories about that. Um, and then, you know, that evolved into Christmas elves <laughs> in the late 19th century, which was a uh, good on your USA. Um, Flogging and then, a dead horse. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Tolkien kind of brought about the high fantasy elves that we definitely know. Um, mm. You know, the extreme beauty and supernatural immortality, long lean build, pointed ears. Um, but I, I do like it when um, they mix it up a bit, though. So um, I just obviously finished The Wheel of Time, rip. Um, and they didn't, there, there weren't many other races in there. Like a lot of it was like the differences between humans and uh, p- humans being ultimately divisive but the same and all that kind of stuff but mm. they had the alefin and the elfin which were like fox-like and snake-like people that lived in this other dimension parallel to us who could answer any question or grant any request but they were treacherous and known to be like deceiving and stuff and it was like and they were all super tall and sinuous but like the and their features were kind of human but kind of not and it was very a very cool way of obviously with a name like elfin it's obviously the elves but like they've taken like a real fey sort of weird twist on it and like you couldn't um and they had like that standard fairy fairy tale mythology about them where you couldn't bring iron musical instruments or fire with you you know the weaknesses of the fey which i thought Mm. was um a really cool way of doing it Um, i do like as well that say you got this alternate world of all these people that can answer questions or you know they can answer any question they can grant any wish but everyone's like, oh, but they're scheming. He's like, of course But there's they a are. price. There's no, a no, price. No, no, It's not even that. This is their sole entertainment. They have whatever <laughs> they want there. The only entertainment they have, because they can do whatever they want, is to see, like, to fuck your them. life up. Yeah. Like, this is the <laughs> well, only thing yeah. that ent- can possibly entertain me. Because, so, like, so these, I can't control what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, these creatures enjoy feeding off human emotions. Yeah. Like, think ones of, like, fear and pain especially. So, like, they do stuff that will cause you fear and pain because... They get off on it. They're like, oh, that's the good stuff. It's like, the original reality TV. That's what they've done. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, if, I'm here for it. I mean, yeah. Um, and then so elves and fae like have similar mythology about them. Um, mm. And then in the King Killer Chronicles, um, the Patrick Rothfuss series, there aren't any elves in that either. Um, and But there are the fae who live in like this parallel mm. fairy world very similar and their weaknesses were fire and iron but they were like lovers of music um so kind of intertwining the elf and fairy stuff um but fairies obviously have been around for forever and like yeah. still extant in like i um iceland like they still believe in the fairies in iceland yeah. um yeah. which is like a huge cultural thing which is really <laughs> cool um percent yeah 100 percent. i don't know is that my favorite elves. thing <laughs> it's my favorite thing that i found out while i was kind of like going through like the the etymology of elves as well is that i've actually i have a lot more respect for a name that i never had respect for before because like it it turns out throughout like old english like high gothic times and stuff they they would cognate elf and a whole bunch of words to create some pretty cool names like you know, the the name Alfwine that used to exist literally means like elf friend and there was uh what was the other one it was yeah elf ward means elf guardian but the one that still exists today is i didn't know that alfred like the name alfred like alfred the butler literally translates to elf advice and apparently that yeah. was like yeah I was like, that's officially now the coolest name in the world because it has stuff to do with elves. But I had like literally no idea. The other one was Elgar. Elgar has sort of like lived hmm. through till today. And that one means elf spear. Which I was like, that's pretty boss as well. That is pretty fucking cool. Right? Like, Right? So yeah. like add some respect to the name Alfred now because it's actually <laughs> fucking boss. Yeah, he's not just a posh nerd. <laughs> but then it's I kept a posh like, nerd with advice. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I think it's I cool that like elves are such like a fantasy trope, but like two of the really mm. good fantasy series I've read don't have any elves in them. Like mm. elves really like they have, you know, um, but there's so many other ones that show up a lot, like halflings. Mm. Mm. Is that just because of Tolkien? 
I think it might be. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I, I didn't see anything about halflings before. I mean, very short people are a thing. Like, yeah, people ha- can be halflings- very short. I always kind of assumed were like kind of a derivative of gnomes because gnomes were a, a, apparently yeah. they they actually just started as like a German sort of like a, you know suspicion whatever you call it but they used to leave like small statues outside their houses to like ward off probably I, it's probably just to scare the Romans away wasn't it well, because like actually, the Germans were really tall and like the Romans were really short so like oh, they're gnomes those, yeah. those all those all those people from the peninsula you're all gnomes yeah it, it probably um, probably was and and then well, apparently D D classifies um, oh go on go on gnomes, D&D. gnomes and um halflings as different um, yeah well you got to get content don't you <laughs> yeah i can't gnomes just seem to be very happy and vibrant and they're just over three feet tall and then halflings the original are, um, the original gnome was two uh two lengths they call it which is the the length between your thumb and your pinky finger so apparently the original gnome was exactly if you're looking at the video that long <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, but then halflings are also affable people who are only three feet tall um but they're a bit more like hmm. they love peace food hearth and home you know so so hobbits yeah. I also, but they don't have big feet, and neither do the yeah. gnomes. Um, but they have very the gnomes and the halflings are described as mostly the same. So, mm. I also like Josh how you were like making a big joke of measuring in this ridiculous way. But anyone that listens to us is American still does that. It's just their <laughs> standard system. Just oh, uh, it's about it's about one pin heads long, yeah. one yard. Yeah. Which I always got confused about because, like, a yard, I pictured like a yard as like a whole garden. So I was like, that's a really, no, isn't really a yard long. like three foot? Something yards, like that. Like One yard is feet. three yards, shoes. Think, yards, I think, is two foot or something. I know, oh. it's stupid. Oh, it's like two Wait, and a half feet or something because the <laughs> system doesn't make sense. They're like, do you know what's going to help here? If we put in a point eight. <laughs> yeah. We, we have a whole shoe. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove half the shoe. How hard is that going to yeah. make it for you to measure things? <laughs> a, yard, <laughs> a yard is um, th- three foot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So We're getting back okay. on get, getting so back to back, the, back track. to fantasy races. We have to measure mm. all of these in measurements of gnomes. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So obviously <laughs> Josh and I are fiends for the elves. Um there's also dragons. I mean, that's a pretty standardized mm. concept, right. right? Yeah. 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 Except you... um then you can look at Chinese dragons and Western dragons. Think about different. like think think about the dragon on the Welsh flag. It's got wings, you know, it's mm. breathing fire. And then you look at Chinese dragons and they're more like snakes with four legs and whiskers. Kind of yeah, well, like yeah. lizards. Well From that the, that's the whole thing about like the the oh, koi sorry, fish. The the koi fish like that people get in tattoos is supposed to be about like you know like change and growth and things like that and it's the whole thing that like the the Chinese dragons actually come from koi fish they come from these like small uh you know gentle creatures so oh my god so the Magikarp like Magi- evolution Magikarp. is real yeah 100%. into Gyarados. Yeah, and Gyarados is is, is actually real. what happens is yeah it's <laughs> like, oh my god oh my god. Yeah. Throughout Chinese folklore, it is yeah, it is the koi fish that a lot of people like. A lot of people get this tattoo without actually like doing any sort of research into it. But yeah, it is the story of the koi that becomes the dragon. So obviously, it's like an it's an elongated fish sort of thing, like part snake sort of in a different way. And then yeah, like what you see in like yeah, old you know Saxon Norman mythology, like all the like, fucking. I'm well, sure I think in like a Saxon and Norman mythology, the original, like the the earliest known dragon depictions, are actually on family crests, like yeah. not even yeah. in books and stuff. That's kind of where they started. But I also the the fir- like the oldest known depiction of a dragon is actually found in like a jade inscription, like in carving in like Mongolia from like three thousand BCE. That's cool. So that's Dope. pretty wild. Uh, Maybe dinosaurs yeah. were actually dragons. Have we found any evidence <laughs> that just suggests they couldn't breathe fire? I mean, th- like <laughs> when you think about like a lot of like you know fantasy creations that have some sort of basis in reality, like that's probably where like like some sort of giant lizard that used to exist that we've probably hunted to extinction. Well, over if, years. have you actually, seen, there's you seen the medieval beast books? Well, there's they even just made shit up. Dragons as well. Like another thing that I just you unlocked partially for oh. talking about dinosaurs yes. but also looking at um thinking of mongolia so 
a lot of stories of these creatures came from uh, finding eggs of dinosaurs in the Gobi Desert in China, mm. like east, far west yeah, China. Yeah, there are so a lot of they, fossils in the Gobi Desert. So they'd find, and they basically look like dragons. Like this, they got like this small, like kind of kind of bird reptile mixes, and they find you can find like fully fo- fossilized eggs that are like partially open, like perfectly preserved specimen on the inside. And they used to also find the skeletons of these creatures in the Gobi Desert. Mm-hmm. And because that was on the Silk Road to Western Europe, uh, from China to Europe, they, those stories kind of came across from the Gobi Desert about these creatures and like kind of like they, they think they're like uh, chimeras, dragons, and all those kinds of beasts came from people finding the skeletons of dinosaurs. Interesting. That's really cool. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Um. Autism. There are there are some good <laughs> representations of dragons that come to mind. Um, the dragons in The Witcher are really fucking sick. Mm, they can like true. talk into your mind. I don't know. They're really cool. And also the dragons in I wrote it down because I knew I'd forget it. Um, and oh, A Song of Ice and Fire. The dragons yeah. now fucking I was, sick. I was that, say, was, yeah, that was that was the best bit of the books. <laughs> yeah, in in the Game of Thrones books, the dragons was done so so well. Like the understanding, respect they gave to the creatures. Yeah, it was fucking. But yeah, it was like the the people that could handle them, the people that couldn't. Like I I yeah. really liked that sort of like yeah. Like there was that, like a yeah. magic to the dragons, and you mm. needed a magic in the people to handle them. I love love that concept. Yeah, like one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And then I guess like you got like wi- like wyverns as well, which are basically just like lesser dragons, like like yeah. non, yeah, like like more primal, non magical, just terrors of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Gulls. <Yeah. laughs> Dr- you mean drones? <laughs> yeah. Drones. Oh, I was mean, somewhere one... the other day. It's always flying a drone past. I thought it's about to die. I was like, it's oh god, it's bur- oh god, what's wrong? Oh Jay, like it was. I was really scared. Slap it. <laughs> but another you know a, a, another race or uh, yeah another race because definitely not a class that we we obviously have to talk about that i'm sure grant has a lot to talk about is obviously uh orcs and orcs are such a big part of so much fantasy law yes. and so again because i was goblins no or no. goblins are very very different things uh king the king of the gnomes uh, king of the gnomes name was gob and his followers were called goblins. And so that's, that's, that's where a lot of people argue uh, goblins actually came from is they were like, they were followers of the King of the Gnomes, the gnomes. whose, ah, whose cool. name was Gob. Uh, but there, yeah, there I'm are Gob's other, backed. there are other people who <laughs> say that, yeah, they, they came more from those that like German tradition of putting little things out to like scare people. But yeah, a lot of people think that that was kind of where goblins came from, but orcs, in terms of the etymology is actually really interesting as well. So it's a, it's a, it seems to be a mix of two words. So the, the Latin word Orcus, Orcus yeah, was a, I had this written down as well. Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was another name for, for Pluto, the God of the underworld. And obviously like, uh, you know, like, uh, I've never heard that. And I was a big fan of my, uh, <laughs> when I was younger. Uh, well, I think but, Orcus is the Latin, the Latin name. Yeah, the, the Latin name for Pluto, um, it was obviously God of the Underworld. And so that's kind of where, you know, people think like you know, orcs come from the ground and come from the earth and the dark places and stuff like that, living underground. But it was also the, <laughs> I like it's the Dutch word nork, which I think is a great word. It apparently it means oh, that. The Dutch language is fantastic. Yeah, but it means a, a petulant, crabbed, evil person, which I think is a, <laughs> that's how you describe it. But I think like nork is something that people just need to bring back as a word. Because like to call, to call someone a nork, nork, I think is great. You it's like Nark, but Nork. Yeah. better. But there's actually, like, when you're talking about the name of the Orc, there's actually a middle part that it goes between them. So Orc in Old English basically means demon. But Orco, as you were saying, came from Orcus in Latin. Mm. But Orco actually means ogre. Oh. Yeah, so Orco, Orco translates to ogre in English. So it's weird that it's gone from... Orcus to Orco to Ogre and Ogre. Get out of my swamp. Then becomes know, Shrek things. Orca's demon and that kind of like takes the likeness of the Ogre but smaller instead of like the the god Orcus. So yeah. it's like the kind of like the the like the, the like the little little bit of salt on top to like finish the transition between God to well, from in- Italian Ogre to Old English demon man. So, Which is really interesting as well because I've never well, actually Tolkien, really Tolkien connected Tolkien used two. orc and goblin interchangeably. So he would refer refer to like the orcs kind of as goblins and 
such like back and forth. Mm. But there were goblin men as well in um, Lord of the Rings. I'm pretty sure. Which yeah, is different so, again. Yeah, men I, I, yeah, and it seems like he was trying to kind of yeah differentiate between like the older orcs and the Urukai as like a different. Species. Oh, Urukai are a different different breed. Yeah, they're yeah, elf, they're, they're, they're elf orcs. Yeah, yeah, but I think that, that elves, wasn't. Yeah, but that I think don't wasn't translated properly in, especially in the films, like more in the books than the films. But the films it sort of presented it as like these were, are orcs and those are yeah, goblins. these are orcs and those are goblins. But and actually, that, they're both orcs. Yeah, Which I think that goblins? was lost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then that was in definitely the Hobbit, though, like the goblins in the Hobbit are like completely different to like the orc, the little orcs that you think are goblins. Yeah, I mean the Hobbit movies we don't talk about. <laughs> well, it should. It, the book's not that long. Like it's one movie. It shouldn't have been three. Yeah, that it was blasphemy. Anyway, um, but like when <laughs> I think of it, when I think of goblin, I think of like a little gremlin kind of character, like a naughty little man who's got like a like stealthing around doing a little goblin homunculus, things. a little, <laughs> like, little homunculus. Well, it's got like I don't know. I imagine something with like pointy ears that's like scurrying about and it's like stealing all your cheese and you're like, get out of here, cheese goblin, and it's like ah, and, like runs out and you're like, ah. Oh, at it again but an orc i'd be like oh fuck there's an orc in the house like and where's my shovel <laughs> like yeah. you know like it, that's a lot scarier like goblins sound more endearing um and then yeah. orcs i just sound you know awful but i guess because that was awful. when we yeah when awful. we thought about doing this episode I, I asked myself this question i'm like why are orcs always bad because i play an orc in DD, and you know he's a pastry chef his name's he's a half Carter orc Cup. he's a half orc but yeah yeah He's still, you know, he's not half evil. Actually, he kind of is, um, to be honest. He's neutral. If if you're weak, I'll just bash people. But that's, you know, that's <laughs> their fault. Sh- should be able to defend themselves. Um, anyway. But that's, <laughs> no, but that's interesting that you asked that question, though, because I've just, I just unlocked a, you know, you know have that memory unlocked. Yeah. Terrible, terrible fucking film. Really bad film. Trolls. But no, Warcraft. <laughs> the Warcraft ah, film yes. actually presented the orcs with a lot of respect. Like there was like the evil corrupted ones, but they were corrupted by a type of magic. Whereas the other ones, not their choice. Yeah. No, they, they wanted to live in peace, but were misunderstood by the humans. Yeah. I'd Yeah. Cause I've watched that film a couple of times. It is garbage, but I like garbage films from time to time. But yeah, well, that was in, in that film though, they actually, they actually did show the orc race a lot of respect. Also in half- elder scrolls is, Oh, sorry. You yeah. go muggy. Oh. I was just going to say half orcs, uh, when occasionally humans and orcs, get together in times of peace. Wow, um, wow, wow. Oh, yeah. Some half-orcs rise to become proud chiefs of orc tribes, their human blood giving them an edge over their full-blooded orc rivals. Some venture into the world to prove their worth among humans and more civilized races. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like racism. <laughs> achieving greatness for their mighty deeds and not- notoriety for their barbaric customs and savage fury. This book's racist. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> what, yeah, El- so I think orcs are just the generic... Bad depiction guys. of evil because i think even yeah. like the ogres in beowulf which is then what orcs were adapted from is kind of like okay so these are the bad guys and we've always been depicted as the bad guys so it's then the go-to bad guy mm. but as you say like the warcraft universe like they're not inherently evil but some of them are evil but i'd say elder scrolls is one of the other few properties i've found where like full-blooded orcs are just they're just people yeah, they're not like inherently evil or anything. If anything, they're part of like the the legion or whatever it's called, like the good guys in Skyrim. <laughs> mm. Well, Outer Scrolls, not um, Skyrim. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I think we're only going to be talking about races here today because I still like have it. a lot to say on race. Class <laughs> is a different thing, but um, but as a, as a white person, I have a lot to say on race <laughs> of fantasy creatures. Um, I actually, I did have, I had one. Last oh yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. One last thing on the orcs. So apparently, talking to racism as well, apparently since uh, the war started in Ukraine in 2014, the Ukrainians have been calling Russians orcs. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's so good. Funny. I'm still, it's, uh, it's crazy to believe, though, what, eight years later, it's still going and still no one's done anything about that war. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, continue. <laughs> back, um, back to fantasy world. Well, well, one thing that I did find refreshing um, in Wheel of Time uh, was that there weren't any orcs. There were Trollocs, 
which is sounds like they're saying trollop, which is really funny. Um, right. But they were trollics, so they're like they were like this mismatch of like some evil creation of the dark forces that were like men crossed with beasts. So they'd have like kind of a human gait, but they might have goat legs and they might have a giant beak and they might have fur and like just like weird combinations. Like some of them would have like a wolf's muzzle. Some of them so would they'd have, just like, be like the, the creatures from the body bouche. Yeah, pretty much. Like <laughs> it, it, it's like that's pretty much how I imagine them. And then they had Ogier as separate. So instead of Ogiers, they had Ogier, which were like um a really peaceful, magical people that like were like really land based and like they were really big and they had like animalistic, like tufted ears that sounded really cute. Um and yeah, and they, they like live in steadings, which are like groves of ancient trees that are safety and, you know, it's like, and, you know, time moves a lot slower for them. And I felt them being very kind of tree beardy, like very entish in like mm. their slow manner of speech and taking a long time to do anything. <laughs> like, that's like how they're really depicted, um, which is really cool. And they're like, humans are always so brash and ready to about to do things, um, which I love. Um, mm. But... Yeah, trolls. That's that's a is they they're always the enemy, right? Trolls, trolls in the dungeon. <laughs> yeah, I I can't think of a time I've ever seen a troll presented in a. They've got a cave troll in a positive um, way. E- even in even in Warcraft, it's the trolls that are usually more evil than the orcs. But is a troll evil? Because I thought like trolls were more beast like, aren't they? Apart from, like, what what about the ones that demand a fee for crossing your bridge? <laughs> Oh, they're just enterprising. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, all right. I mean, that means that they're capitalists. capitalists and yeah, yeah. So well, they are evil, hundred percent. They are yeah. hence evil. We, yeah. we can confirm trolls evil. Move on. Next. Also, <laughs> but if you're gonna if you're gonna go there, are the townspeople gonna feed the troll? Fair question. They're not. Uh, I thought. I thought so we're he's, not. Meant he's got to do what troll. he's got to do. Can we do an episode about this. Oh yeah. god. <laughs> yeah. Don't feed them. We came to that conclusion. Don't feed them. <laughs> True. Um, they're gonna survive, man. We forced them into this predicament. Mm. Vampires. Now they're rarely a high fantasy thing, but they were super high fantasy mm. back in Bram Stoker's day. That was like taking all these myths and turning it into like a really cool concept. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Vlad the Impaler. Shout I think. Out to I think. I would like to hear more about like vampires and see more about like vampires in fantasy that aren't. The Twilight vampires, which don't make sense, but well, you know, I, like I've, I'm as I've been kind of saying over the last little while, I've been finally going through the Harry Potter books, and I'm up to the last one at the moment. And I always find it interesting that like vampires are sort of mentioned as just an accepted part of that world, but in, they're never really seen at all. There's like one scene where someone has like a vampire friend, but mm. other than that, like that race is just sort of like not explored at all. It's just sort she of like, put it yeah, in yeah, too hard there. basket. She and was like, just, oh. Don't know how I'm going to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> like they're, they're in like, they're in like fantastic beasts and where to find them. That, that was like a little book companion mm. that came out to Harry Potter and mm. vampires were listed in that. And I was like, I'm pretty sure they're people, but like, but all right. I, I always see them quite separate to the world of fantasy. Maybe, maybe it's because I kind of attach them to like more like horror and stuff like that. Maybe, but yeah. Like, yeah, when, when, when well, I think of fantasy, they are a fantastical thing. They are. I think thing, they're separated because they're usually just like put in erotic books instead of like high fantasy. Yeah. High fantasy really <laughs> uses vampires, but like, I think it's a cool concept that could be explored in high fantasy hmm. of having like, you know, if, right, someone if, who's, Got if you read a book, powers and yeah, yeah. but if, if you read a book and it had like elves and orcs and all that sort of like just you know, standard accepted tropes, and then there was also vampires, would it would it make sense? Like, would you the be Witcher like, does oh it. yeah, it's the, the Witcher, the Witcher, the Witcher, has the, vampires. Witcher yeah. the Witcher has a vampire who actually, well, a vampire like thing person that travels with Geralt for a while, who like mm. is it the Witcher. I'm pretty sure it is. Where like yeah. they travel together for a bit, and he like he's just got all these really weird behaviors and stuff. And then there is like the stroll. I can't remember what it's called, but like in a, like she's like a lady who turns into like a bat demon thing and like, yeah. off people. So and that's like, another one. They got like, like, the, like, especially like the Witcher universe, like a lot of the, the elder vampires, like they, they, they don't have a human form anymore. Like they are 
giant bat creatures and there's like i think there's like six different kinds of vampire in the witches universe so like there's like your human ones you got your um there's one that starts with b which is a bit more of like a um kind of like a like say like a crimes of passion style vampire (laughs) where like it kills people but it's like can't control itself it's like it's kind of like a werewolf meets a vampire and then you got like the it chinders which are just like ancient vampires which are basically like giant fucking yeah bat beasts that will just maul yeah. anything oh. that comes into its lair but um yeah the higher vampire like Geralt travels with one of them for a while and it like evades his detection and stuff because they're such like ball of vampires and then they have like other vampire like creatures but i just think it's a cool trope of like yeah. a curse you know like a curse. Uh, I think it might have been ruined by like teen fantasy, though. So. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. Uh, yeah, it's just it, hey, vampires are just like specifically just horny now. Like you can't put them back in like the regular fantasy baskets. Like if you have if you have vampires, they've got to be horny. Yeah, I would really All like right. to see someone try and make that work in a universe though, where they're because I mean I guess like for The Witcher, I always kind of see them more like grim fairy tales rather mm. than like like your yeah. standard like high fantasy tropes. I, I would love to see someone do that and do it well yeah. without it sounding like it's just like i want to force this into this world like I'd, I'd like to see that done yeah that's something i'd be super into um and i mean werewolves again are like another thing that have been corrupted by young adult genres <laughs> um and like they're not super thought of in like high fantasy things um but like yeah, i don't know like shape-shifting humans that's cool mm. like Mm. That's something I'd be down for. I mean, is that not a druid? <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, that, that yeah. sounds like a druid to me. But it's yeah, it's yeah. The but and like, you choose to be of, changing yeah. or not? And one, one of the characters in in what has like wolf powers, and that's like, I guess the closest I've ever seen in fantasy, though. To or do oh. we just not see it because vampires and werewolves weren't in Beowulf, which means they weren't in the Tolkien <laughs> books. It's in the name, Grant. It says wolf in the name. You know, it says wolf in the in name. The it's the um, man's name. <laughs> Satyrs. That's another one that like was done in um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, and that, know, like, that's half, a big throwback to Norse mythology. That's, mm. Yeah. Yeah. And Greek mythology. Um, mm. Satyrs are, you know, hang out in the forest, pan, you know, um, half human, half goat, like shit tons of paintings of them and stuff too. Um, I've never and, seen a boss satyr though. There, I, I don't, that'd be one that'd be hard to do. Like Pan's like, Labyrinth, eh, eh. like, like, like to like I'm doing like to the level of like like Legolas, like a Legolas version of a satyr. I think would be quite difficult to do. I feel you like could, you, could, you could poop in little pellets. Are they generally like <laughs> quite like a, like troublesome though? Like they're like troublemakers, like satyrs. They're, they're mis- yeah, like yeah, they're very mischievous. Like yeah. they're mm. like I think they're related somehow to like I don't know, like lust and all of that party world of the Greeks, you know. So maybe they don't fit into full fantasy. Yeah, um, like maybe they're not being boss because they're also the type of dude that's just gonna jam a fucking twig in your spoke on your bike <laughs> instead. <laughs> Because he's angry that his legs bend backwards. <laughs> okay, I do have here um, gnomes, and I had my note about how they're represented in the Harry Potter books, which I f- think is really funny. Um, how they're represented as like garden pests. <laughs> yeah, and like it's like, oh no, we've got gnomes, and they have to go out and deal with them, and like some some of them get bitten by gnomes and stuff, and I think it's so funny. Like, I thought. Like that was one of my favorite. Like that's yeah. a really good representation. Yeah, it's like like infestations of gnomes at the yeah the Weasley's house and whatnot. But like Harry Potter, like is an interesting one because like I I've always I guess been kind of confused with their representation of elves being so close to goblins. Like I I don't the know the house like, elves. Yeah, what? Yeah, like what the like the like Dobby the house is... elf versus like the yeah like the the goblins is just such a, a weird sort of thing to me like they're supposed to be these like similar but not creatures but it's never explained at least maybe i just wasn't paying attention it's never explained why yeah the elves look like that like they yeah they they refer to like wars and shit but yeah I, i've never understood why the house elves are just so close to goblins in that universe i don't think she thought it through that much <laughs> i think she was like 
a house elf. That's what a crazy concept of an elf serving a human. <laughs> yeah. it it's like she's stolen Santa Claus's definition of an elf rather than an actual definition of an elf. <laughs> yeah, rather than like, can you imagine like Legolas being a house elf? Like, <laughs> God, you wouldn't want to ask. I mean, he'd probably get sexually abused, actually. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Draco Malfoy's mom's like, oh, house elf. <laughs> that, like, I need your help. Fantasy right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, immediately, <laughs> just... Middle-aged women apparently aren't allowed <laughs> near fantasy because they just make it sexy. Fifty, sh- <laughs> 50 Shades of Grey Elf. Um, <laughs> I love that we're already an hour into this podcast as well and we're still going on about different races. Haven't mentioned classes at all, but that's and fine. we were worried about not having enough content. I told yeah. you all, we'll just, we'll make it. We'll make content. Yeah. Doesn't matter um, how many notes we have. 100%. And then D- D&D's also got like Dragonborn and Tiefling. Mm. So like... They're weird kind of extra classes. But again, they're all kind of humanoid. So Mm. I am retrospectively kind of upset that I had a half orc barbarian instead of a dragonborn barbarian because now I don't get the breath weapon. But (laughs) next campaign. Dragonborn Dragonborn are pretty cool. They're like lizard people. Um, And tieflings are, again, like like lizard people. Uh, But they're like lizard elves. They're like lizard dark elves. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and that's like, I don't know. They're kind of like drow, of aren't they? Like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the drow elves are the dark elves, aren't they? Yeah. And yeah. they're evil for some reason. That's probably racism again. Well, yeah, they're that's it, in the, in that article that I'm going to put in the thing. It, it talks about the drow. Is like I think it was in the first uh, advanced D and D book had them as sort of like an underground species. But yeah, it's like they had dark skin and therefore racist, according to this. Um, a pack struck generations ago infused the essence of Asmodeus, overlord of the nine hells, into their bloodline. Their appearance and nature are not their fault, but the result of an ancient sin. Um, they still kind of look human, but they have uh, horns. <laughs> um, they have a tail. Uh, they have ca- sharply pointed canine skin, and they have solid colored eyes with no pupils. Is it? Um, this is tieflings, yeah, not, not yeah. That's drow. tieflings, yeah. yeah so they're basically are, tiny devils. <laughs> yeah, they're just like little devil people, which is yeah. sick. And I, I think more humanoid creatures should have tails, personally. Mm, absolutely. That's, um. So, do you think <laughs> that all fantasy employs the same sort of tropes? Well, not all of it, but like it is just so common for there to be, you know, like an elf and a dwarf, and it's like. If the dwarf is mining, you're not like, oh, that's weird. Like, like, do we well, closer to like, the ground? Wh- I guess why are we probably... sick? Of- <laughs> it's <off>. efficient. <laughs> <laughs> why are we sick of it yet? Like, why are we bored of it? Like, I th- I think it's uh, it's something uh, that harkens back to to two episodes ago when we were talking about uh, not being able to let go and like you, you know when you talk about milking a film franchise, you know you find something that already has this established lore. I guess it is easier. Like if I just say, you know, an elf appeared, I don't have to describe an elf. Like people already have those stereotypical assumptions. So maybe it's just easier for writers to to lean on those rather than having to get into, you know, as much mm. extraction as possible into what this particular creature is with every race they kind of bring into. It's just laziness for the most part. But I also really feel cool. at the same time, people would say, oh, that's not what I've been told an elf is. So that's not an elf. Mm. Whereas, like, it's all made up, so an elf could be whatever the fuck. Yeah, exactly. It's it's all made up, so like anything <laughs> could be an elf, but also yeah. like. I mean, to me, orcs will always be green. I don't care what any what anyone says, any color is. Orcs to me are always green. Always. That's that's, uh, that's a running thing I got in my campaign at the moment. Is my DM like because when I describe my character, I never said what color he was, <laughs> and throughout the whole time, like my DMs just like described him as green, and then I got into <laughs> an altercation with one of his NPCs because I'm actually blue. <laughs> but he's like, but he's like that, you know, like that gray, green, blue, like, but you could yeah. be any of the colors. I'm like, no, yeah. he, he's identifying as a blue orc. He's not green. I'm not taking this yeah. shit. No one's, <laughs> no one's, no one's, no one's brought up enough in my D&D campaign that I've got great, like this, like whitish blue skin. Like I'm like made myself like an ugly or like elf. So I've got like <laughs> blue skin. And I was like, no one bullies me about this enough. And then I was like, then I was also like, why do they always know I'm a half elf? And Jai's like, because you have blue, like at my DM was like, you have blue skin. And I was like, yeah, that's that's right. I forgot, I forgot about that. <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> that tracks, checks, checks out. 
Um, well, we, we, we definitely need to start uh, wrapping up this discussion, but Margie, did you have any particular notes you wanted to, to bring up before we kind of, we, we go into the last part about who, who are some of our favorite representations of these races? Um, I just think that overall, I just wish humans weren't always such a feature of fantasy. Like, mm. and I understand that like a lot of literature explores the follies of man and like the frailties of what it is to be of humankind and mortality and man's desire and, you know, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely all that kind of stuff. But like, and, but like the flaws of man are just so overdone. Like every fantasy book, there's a person who gets corrupted mm. by something. <laughs> and I want, I want more traveling parties of different races mashed together yeah. like D&D. I even want like a fucking talking dog. I don't know. Like I want <laughs> <laughs> I want some fantasy that's not just like everyone's bipedal. Like or maybe yeah. it makes sense if they're all bipedal. But like busting an animal familiar. I don't know. Um I, I yeah. guess like at that point like producers will probably be like well then people won't be able to relate to something that's not exactly them. That'd probably yeah. be their excuse as to why. Like, yeah, I don't a, believe in that, but I love it. That was like excuse, fantasy. but I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. That, that's, right. My, that's thoughts. Yeah. But- I, li- I like that thought. I think that's a wonderful thought to kind of round things out on. But yeah, we, we kind of have to ask the question. We'll ask it, you know, again, each individually is what what are some of either either the best or the worst representations? I'll, I'll leave it up to I've you. I've got too, one but- for the worst. All right, Grant. Well, let's find out. What, what do you think is one of the worst representations of these particular uh, races? Well, it's not these particular races, but I'm going to go. have to go with the aliens from Battlefield Earth that are just really bad blue Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Oh, very, uh, very fair. <laughs> um, what about you? What about you, Margie? What, what are some of your either, either best or worst representations of these? Um, elves in Lord of the Rings the like even in the movies and then just in the rings of power um and obviously the novels like that goes without saying they have so much lore and so much depth and like the beauty of their race and people especially in the writing is so nicely conveyed and it's like this mystical wonder about the elves that's just i mean you can see why tolkien's writing of them that's what everyone wants their elves to be because Mm. tolkien wrote them amazingly and they don't really care about people but they kind of have to because they live in this world but they're like yeah you know and it's just they're so fantastic and like have this magic about them um and yeah and the elves in the witcher are also done pretty well um i don't know if they show up in the t- no they do show up in the tv yeah, series they're, but they're like they're a very broken down sort heavily of uh <laughs> heavily subjugated people yeah, they're a really subjugated, broken down people because men have just been terrible to them. And I think, like, I mean, The Witcher does explore a lot how men are terrible. Like, the human race is just shit. That's one of the chief explorations of The Witcher. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and, like, the elves being so downtrodden and stuff mm. in The Witcher books, um, I actually thought was really cool. But um, I do like how The Witcher gives context as to the reason why they're not yeah. liked. Yeah. Because all the humans believe that because they became with like the convergence that brought all the creatures that are evil as fuck that didn't have their world beforehand. They're yeah. like, oh, well, it must be the elves that also rocked up at the same time. Even though it's not yeah. quite true. No, it's not. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, but I just, I think it's just really cool. Um, yeah. Um, uh, what are you, some of your, do you have any examples of really good or bad ones, Josh? I, I do, and it's it seems obvious, but I'm going with it anyway. Uh, all all three races in terms of like uh, elves, dwarves, and orcs in the Warhammer Forty Thousand universe. Yeah, I really knew it was like, coming. Yeah, it had to be done because elves in the the Warhammer Forty Thousand universe are the Eldar. Um, literally, that is stolen from uh, you know the Lord fucking the Return of the King. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, the Eldar. It's I, I really like what they've done with it because the, the Eldar is a race used to basically you know control the galaxy they were you know they were the, the most powerful they were the most incredible that then their hubris was their downfall and so most of their civilization was destroyed and now there's only bits and pieces left which is i feel like what would be the end goal of the description of the elf which is someone who's you know is really powerful is really magical is really like he lives for a very long time but is uh, you know, apathetic towards what's going on they don't really think they're quite self-involved and whatnot so it's like the elder seems to be where elves would be forty thousand years in the future 
That's cool. Dwarves could be a little bit better. I mean, there's the squat and the leagues of Voltan who are just sort of like, yeah. The you know, squat. The squat. They, yeah, they, I was they, like, they weren't, yeah. That's a bit they on the nose. Boys. That, <laughs> That's why they've been changed. <laughs> I believe that's why they've been changed. They've literally just been re-released now as the Leagues of Votan. Uh, and I'm I'm pretty sure it's because they didn't want to call it the squat again, which they were called once upon a <laughs> time. But the like the orcs in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, I really like because I like that they've they've gone a very different way with the well the <laughs> for lack of a better term, the orcs are just uh mushrooms. They actually like they breed by sending their like growing their spore out and they grow through spore and so they are literally like like conscious mushrooms. They were they like bioengineered. I'm afraid of mushroom viruses overtaking us. I'm not okay with this. (laughs) They're like they're bioengineered and they're like they were created by the old gods and stuff to fight the Necrons originally. And there's a whole bunch of lore there. But yeah, it's like how they (laughs) how they like procreate is like by uh yeah it's by mushrooms and there's the whole point of like once once orcs appear on a world a world is never really free of the orcs because they can't get rid of all the spores that just grow more orcs to then come and fight um oh. but uh, yeah i i really like the creative way in which the warhammer universe takes these these tropes adds their own sort of twist to it whether it is like where are they going to be in forty thousand years from now or how do they grow in a kind of different way i i, I think they yeah they, they could do better to dwarves i feel but they they nail orcs and elves very very well yeah that's cool i like mm. i like the orcs being like a fungus parasite kind of thing that's really yeah. cool yeah, yeah, it kind of brings them a bit closer to nature. It's yeah, it it, it has some really kind of interesting sort of ways. Well, that you orcs can are always it. meant to be just so unnatural, you know. That's what mm. evil is. It's unnatural, but mm. evil. They, they, yeah, no, that's really cool. That's really cool lore. Maybe I'll read the books. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But it is time, dear listener, to move into the final beat for speaking this of books. Episode. Speaking of books, uh, this week's final beat is the is the point. One has to go. Uh, and, uh, the one that has to go this week, it's books or movies. Uh, Grant, let's start with you. Where, where did you go with this? See, it depends on the context. So if we get rid of the books, do I still get the movies from those properties? If it's a no, then it has to be the books, even though I really struggle to read books. I can't, can't keep my concentration. I read the same page 400 times. Like, would you still have the Lord of the Rings movies if... Yeah, yeah so if I, just if saying, I, all books, all books just disappear. Or, but all people still disappear. came up with those ideas yep. and put it on the screen. Yep, 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 I, yep. I'd take that, but that's just not realistic. So as much as I struggle with reading, I'd probably have to still go with books. Interesting, Margie. So get you? get rid of movies. Is that what you're saying? Get rid of movies. Shooketh. Um, well, otherwise I wouldn't have any of the properties that I do have because if no one wrote books, there'd be no scripts. No, so. but like, what if what if tomorrow, like, you woke up and it was like fucking nazi germany all over mm. again they'd gotten rid of all the books or they'd gotten rid of all the movies um yeah. so, so but every, every, everything exists yeah. everything exists everything that has existed exists up to this point except for oh, then i'll take movies call the books. yeah yeah so like i mean i can't see anything better than the lord of the rings coming out in the future so <laughs> um yeah Ready, um, gee i wonder which way i'll answer all right having my only relationship this year being with a book series. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shockingly going to say movies can yeet out of here. Um, yeah. I understand that books aren't everyone's cup of tea, but books have always been my friend, my safe space. They're so personal. You could share a book with someone else as well. Like, you know, you can listen to an audio book or you can read to a loved one that is like, such an intimate really nice experience just to read to someone that you care about Mm. um books are stimulating and it's screen free which in today's world lord knows we need um and then maybe book fairs will become more of a thing and more people will have reading clubs and that would be really nice and (laughs) then like instead of going to go see movies we could just all go to a nice room and read and eat popcorn like a nice dark, quiet room. That sounds, that sounds awful. really good. This buttery books. I'm fine. I, I'm a book destroyer. Don't tell any other book people that. But I dog ear, lie face down. Oh, oh. oh I'm I. Books I are there to be read, unless it's a first yeah. edition. Fuck. Like when we sit down and play magic, like someone always brings chips, and 
someone will eat the chips and they'll pick up my card to see what it does and they'll put it down. I can just see a greasy thumbprint on the top. And yeah, I but, fucking but they're, hate they're, it. They're, in, they're in sleeves, aren't they? That's why you put them in sleeves. Yeah, I know, but I'm still like, come on, man, just like clean your fingers <laughs> off before you pick up my cards. <laughs> Lick Please. your fingers off and then put your spit all over <laughs> my cards. Uh, Josh, what are you getting rid of? Are you getting rid of books or movies? Oh, I don't know, to be honest, because like, if I'm Man, you in, you came the, up with this question. I know, I know, but it's like my my problem is that if I'm in the mindset that I'm in right now, I've honestly been struggling to read for months now. Like I, I've like yeah. tried so many times. My I, I've been so stressed out with work. I've had so much going on that like I I find that I have to be in the right mind space to read and to consume. Yeah, Whereas absolutely. I don't. I don't for films. And so right now I want to say books can yeet off because I never have to be in the right mind state to watch TV. I can be in a good mood. I can be in a bad mood. I can be in like a, I just need to shut out the world or I really want to focus on something. And I feel like I can consume film a lot easier than I can in any mind state. But you didn't say that TV shows would go though. So uh, I'm banking on that. (laughs) Fair. (laughs) <laughs> got you on a technicality <laughs> on a technicality but 100% I mean TV shows as well it's all going it's either books or the screen in general going away <laughs> but no okay. I, I, I stick I, with my answer yeah I, I feel like I, I want to say books because I love books I love reading I love the information that you can get out of it that it just can't be presented properly in a film or in a TV show I feel like there there is a depth to books that you don't get in film film films can do really good really adaptations they can do uh, they can present it really really well but yeah i i want to say books i really really want to say books but in my current mind state i would go insane without films i would go insane without watching tv shows and films and stuff like that it's so, so, it's it's so uh, interesting like i struggle to make it through a movie most of the time the yeah. only movie i've watched and not been like ADHD doing six other things at once was watching Rogue One like which I like yeah but like every other every other movie I try and watch I'm like I lose interest I walk out I'm like I already know how this is going to end like I get so it's like I just don't have the attention span for movies I I could spend I could spend 10 months of my life reading a book I do like (laughs) how you just said Oh, the only movie I've been able to sit down and watch recently is Rogue One, and then you get go on to say it's like I usually can't watch it movies because because I, I know how. To, <laughs> but like it's the movie with the hardest ending because it goes straight into Episode Four. Of <laughs> like, we all know how it ends. It literally yeah, ends with how we, we've it's seen an the exception ending. to every rule. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. <laughs> I've seen it now. before. <laughs> <laughs> but dear listener, we need to know what would you decide every Friday on the Northside Nerds Instagram. Links are in the show notes for all that. Uh, you'll see my amazingly edited tiktok because i'm trying my best to lord stay up with the times lord of lord the TikTok, of the, lord of the youths <laughs> if you're a nerd and you love tiktok and you want to take over our social media please do, do let it. me know because oh, taking be... inquiries for interns on social 100%. media we yeah. will pay you nothing but you will Cause... have because we get paid nothing but you'll have <laughs> love and i'll talk to you about wheel of time this has yeah. actually cost you money <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> but it's a means to an end. It's a means That's to a it. wonderful end. It's One day. A, yeah. The end of my money. End. Yeah, the, the end of money. But yeah, follow Norsa Nerds on Instagram. You can go back through uh, all follow the us. questions we've had. Hashtag. Follow us. This is our twentieth episode, so there are twenty hey! questions. Yeah. It's right? nearly That's as old as Grant. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it's very exciting. There's twenty questions you can go and answer. There's twenty different uh, you know, moral dilemmas. <gasps> can we play twenty posed. questions on the show? We could probably Love play 20, 20 questions. questions on the show. I reckon that'd That's be a good new time. segment. We play, you guys have to guess what I'm thinking about. Hot tip, it's Wheel of Time. <laughs> <laughs> but My life. check it out, whether you're listening on uh, your podcast app or you're watching on YouTube, share it with your friends, tell your friends about it. We really like your way. There was a really cute message the other day on the Instagram that was like, I only just discovered this and I didn't realize how much I needed it. And I was really fucking wholesome. I know one of you two answered Aww. it. I didn't actually actually answer oh, I it. I replied. Yeah, it was really, yeah. really sweet. But that I'm really, was really bad cute. at checking socials. But yeah, that's right. So am I. But yeah, so we love hearing from you. Uh, follow the Northside Nerds Twitch. Me and Grant are getting real deep into Multiplayer Mondays. We're having a lot of fun oh, yeah. with it. Getting I'm a playing yeah, yeah. on. Hey, yeah, now that I've got two on. screens, Commander Keen, here I come. If someone Commander has Keen, Comm- Commander Keen for me. Um, and I'm sure you can emulate Twitch. it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can make it happen. Mate. I'm playing I on really Floppy Disc or I'm dying on this hill. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, the computer would break if I tried to stick a foot. I don't think oh, it won't have it. It yeah. will not have a place to put a floppy. Floppy, disk. floppy disks have not <laughs> not been in desktop computers for fucking at least ten years, if not longer. You won't even get a disk tray anymore in a computer. That's what I, I don't. I don't have a CD drive. This this like fucking thing is literally made without any space for a CD drive. I yeah, couldn't even no. put one into if I tried. But there's room for a pokey screen on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, so big is. light up. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah. yeah. That's that's oh, is why that I, what that is. I thought that was your um what's it called? I thought it was like your Steam Deck. No, that's literally the front of my yeah, you can see it in the reflection behind me. Yeah. Ah. It's, it's going through it's all the different lights. Mine's just got a massive fucking desktop. water cooling radiator in the front, so that's Fuck why yeah. I can't put a disc cover in there. Just <laughs> Mine's a laptop. It has buttons. Nerd. To be fair, I wish I had a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> on that note though we love you you're a nerd you're a massive nerd you're a huge love nerd you with the cool stun cool kids oh, out there and so it. are you for listening see you next week nerd <laughs> peace, love and, peace love and orcs stay away from those wedgies